again, make sure, please, that the sound is on. So, how do we decide on treatment? Ideally, we do a level one evidence study, which means this. Translating this to diabetic macroedema, it means you inject, and then you re-inject, and then you re-inject, and then you re-inject. So what's wrong here? If you blindly accept the study result, you become a robot. And again, what I said earlier today, we are not dealing with tissues. We are not dealing with organs. We are dealing with human beings. And imagine yourself if you have to go to your doctor every month or two months and have an intraocular injection given. That's anxiety and an emotional roller coaster because your vision will improve. It'll go up after the injection. And then it goes down. And then it goes up again, and it goes down again. Then you have the cost. So if you look at this image, and you take this Mercedes, and after a few injections, <laughs> your eyeball becomes a rich one. So I started doing vitrectomy with ion peeling for diabetic macroedema using this technique about 25 years ago. Uh, ILM peeling, as we heard earlier, is very different in these eyes than in an eye that has a normal retina. So especially when you approach the center, for example in this eye, where I have a very large cyst that you do not want to unroof, you have to change your technique. You become very slow and you're peeling almost tangential to the surface. And notice that the retina will be tenting. And the way you see that is that the line of separation uh, of the ILM from the retina, you will see a white line moving along uh, your peeling. I always peel up to the arcades. I think we can move on. And then I usually finish this with laser maculopexy, which is nothing else but giving roughly 10, 12 laser spots uh, a little bit external to the uh, avascular zone border. So why is vitrectomy not done more commonly today? Here is the answer. I looked at this website. It took me two days to collect all these data. And you can see the number of studies using all kinds of things. Uh, on the left, and you can see the number of studies dealing with surgery. But that's only one of the problems. The other problem is this. On the left-hand side, everything is standardized down to the color of the shoe of the nurse who will bring in uh, the syringe. On the vitrectomy side, nothing is standardized, as if surgery and surgery are the same thing. Like, this is a mouse and this is a mouse. I'm using the second one. So, the third problem is surgery is usually done when nothing else worked. We all know the results of the EVS, EVRS study, which showed, I'm sorry, I forgot the R, uh, which showed that when you compared all kinds of treatment options, vitrectomy uh, with ion peeling had better results. But I want to show you my own results. And I operate in several countries. We did several reviews of our results. This is the latest one from Poland. And you can see that 90% of maculas dried with one intervention, and the vast majority of patients improved. And even those eyes where there is no physical objective improvement, the patients will tell you uh, that they do feel some improvement. Now, whether that's uh, a very subjective uh, option or, or, or uh, opinion or not, that's another question, but what really matters is what the patient uh, experiences. So, my summary is, as, and I, I again fully support what Dr. Hemmen said yesterday, 
is that vitrectomy should be on our, uh, in our armamentarium. And if we allow ourselves to be distracted from the person into looking at tissue pathology only, then we are not truly physicians. So do not get distracted. I don't think I'm being unreasonable, do you, Alan? No, no, not at all, not at all. I know we're all busy, it's the same for everyone. But, you know, if we don't get this development file finished by the end of the week, then we'll never get it done. Mm -hmm. So I think if everybody pulls together mm -hmm. and works a bit of overtime, then we'll all benefit in the long run, don't you agree? Yes, yes, yes. Are you listening to me, Alan? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm not telling anyone to do vitrectomy as a, as a primary option. What I am saying is think about it early and not late. Thank you. If a patient comes to you with, for DME, do you go ahead do the surgery first or do you start with anti-VEGFs and then do surgery? What is your, it's very what is your road? I will tell the patient that we have basically two options. Uh, we can give you several injections in the future, and I do not know how many you will need. Uh, your chances of improvement is measurable, uh, but you have to come back. Or we can do surgery where you have, I don't say 90%, I would say you have a 70% chance of having one procedure done uh, and, and will, you will not need another intervention, or if you do, because obviously some patients will, then we can still give you the injections afterwards, and I let the patient choose. Barbara? Uh, yes? Sure. Oh. Done? Sorry. More or less done. <laughs> what, what, if, Parents? If, yes. Hi. My question actually is very similar, because do you have a visual acuity threshold? Yeah, it's a very good question. Based on, you know, legal yes. medical issues. Yes. And uh, as you may have seen on the slide, the risk of, of the surgery is really minimal oh. today. Yeah. So, and again, I am not making a decision for my patient. So I think that pretty much covers the medical legal side. Uh, I do not have a cutoff. Actually, cut the patient does not allow you not to decide. The patient always asks you to decide. Well, I, I can tell you honestly, I do not decide for my patient. If I was not able to get the patient make a decision after my first explanation, I will explain it again. I'm, I'm that serious about this. So, but to answer the question, no, I do not have a visual acuity cutoff. I do not... Uh, discourage or, or contraindicate surgery based on the lack of traction seen on OCT, uh, or, or even if the eyes or the retina is I obviously ischemic, because I have seen improvement in, in both of those categories. Okay. And in fact, the, the, the better the visual acuity, the, the better the chance of reaching permanent full vision. So my preference, is a visual acuity of not worse than 0 0.6. Okay. Last question. Uh, ILM peeling, you choose to do that, but why do you peel over the fovea, especially if you have a big cyst? Don't you think it would be the same thing to peel all around, like I'm in not a that donut good and that uh, I can peel around the cyst. Huh? I'm not that good to peel around that cyst. Oh, come on. Maybe, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm that serious. <laughs> You know, I, I know where I would like to have the ILM to be peeled, but is it always tearing exactly where I want it? No. Okay. 